Did you know that we only know 1.6 million animals among the 8.7 million that are present on this earth? Even the ones we do not know are still full of surprises you've probably never heard of before. Take buffaloes, for example, who seem to be perfectly normal. Well, it turns out these horned and hairy cows like to jump off cliffs for funsies. Then there are goats that faint for a weird reason. There's a fish with 4,000 teeth, and if you watch long enough, you'll also get to know how many male anglerfish literally dissolve into females to make babies. Alright, make sure you subscribe to the channel and get ready for a weird one. Snakes feasting on toad organs We've all heard of regular cobras who just wrap around their victim and crush their bones. Sure, that's scary, but wait till you listen to what Asian kukri snakes do. It's 10 times worse. First off, they have a special taste for toads. Thanks to their knife-like teeth and their upper jaws, they can kill them in just a few seconds. But let's talk about exactly how they eat them. First, they slash and disembowel the prey, then plunge their heads right into the abdominal cavities just to munch on their organs one by one, almost like some kind of toad caviar. All of that while the toad is still alive and the outer skin is completely intact. Gotta keep it fresh, right? Right, this awfully graphic feeding habit was unknown to scientists. Usually they would rip some chunk from their prey or even just gulp down their meals in one big bite. Those we can imagine, but slurping their insides like some sort of demented vampire is just scary. Mostly it's just the Asian black spotted toads that are the victim, probably because they are very stout and have really thick skin, about two to three inches. It's not like the toads just give up halfway through the fight and just let the snakes have a go at it. During this horrendous fight, the toads fight back with a toxic white substance they secrete. The evisceration strategy of their vermin could be a way to avoid the poison and just get a tasty meal. Only Mother Nature knows that though. Vibrations of Japanese Honeybees Honeybees are generally seen as the neutral species among the Vespid family. They're silly little insects who go around stumbling into flowers and sometimes bumping, not windows. They get enough attention, so let's talk about C. japonica who are their hardcore, more metal cousins. These bees have a very good and effective way of dealing with hornets that no other honeybee uses. Asian giant hornets can destroy a whole honeybee colony, since the bees have a very uncoordinated defense of a honey colony. But a C. japonica are smart creatures. Whenever a hornet enters the hive, a whole mob of these bees surround it in a ball, covering it fully so that it can't react back. They don't suffocate the hornet, instead they boil it. They start violently vibrating their flight muscles, which raise the enrapture to about 115 degrees Fahrenheit. After making hot hornet soup, the bees also raise the level of carbon dioxide in the ball, probably wondering how the honeybees don't die during this. Well, they can handle 122 degrees Fahrenheit, but the hornets can't handle the high temperatures and the high concentration of CO2. Not all bees make it out alive, but some also die when they sting intruders, so it's almost the same amount of damage. This method saves their whole colony, so bees understand the concept of the greater good and the concept of good bee ball soup. Tiny male anglerfish fuses with much larger females. Sure, some people are desperate to get a partner, but you don't believe how awful needy the male anglerfish is. These creatures are barely an inch long, but can release an enzyme strong enough to dissolve the skin of the female, who is much bigger than him. This then establishes a circulation of blood connected to hers. After a while, it will lose most of its internal organs and fins and become one with the female fish. The male becomes nothing but a set of testes after a while. Being one of their kind, scientists decided to name these sexual parasites. So, did you think your ex was clingy? Penguin poop bombs. Penguins are weird creatures after childhood filled with pingu. We grew to love them, but there are still things we don't know about them. They have their very cute qualities like giving rocks as a gift for mating, and they also have their gross habits like projectile pooping. Yes, you hear that right, and we thought we would never have to say those words together. These aquatic birds can squirt literal jets of feces to distance double their own body length. Scientists were perplexed as to how their rectums could even produce that much pressure. So they started observing them going to the loop, which would be illegal in any other case. But these are penguins, so it's okay. Humboldt penguins are barely 28 inches tall, but they can generate enough poop projectile pressure to send sort of a fecal bomb flying at speeds of five miles per hour, which lands 53 inches away. They don't use their incredible powers to fight or cover others in poop as revenge though. It's just to make sure their nests and their living areas remain clean, but sometimes it does land on a dearly unfortunate penguin. Fainting goat. 
Fainting in humans and practically any other species means you're either super dehydrated, anemic, or extremely sick. But it's quite a common occurrence for myotonic goats, who are also known as Tennessee fainting goats. They have a hereditary condition that causes them to stiffen and fall over every time they're startled, which explains their name a lot. There might be a lot of questions in your mind right now. How do they faint? Does it hurt? Does it happen every single time they're scared? Well, we'll answer all of them. All of these fainting shenanigans are because of a small change in the C1-CN1 gene. Their amino acid, alanine, is replaced with proline residue. And because of that, the chloride channel in their muscle fibers has a reduced conductance of chloride ions. You won't understand much of what we just said if you're not a university-level bio student. Basically, it causes a delay in the relaxation of the muscles. Their muscles excitably becomes much more increased when the permeability of the chloride decreases in the fibers. So if you scream loudly, clap too hard, drop a heavy object near them, they'll immediately fall over. And there he goes. Okay, bud. Thankfully, it's not a painful occurrence, just a very annoying one, especially for the goats themselves. An experiment showed that depriving them of water for three days made their faintings go away completely. And after two to three days of water, they came back. But if you're a farmer and have these fainting goats, don't take away their water privileges. Just learn to be a little quieter. Isopods eating fish tongues. For fish, we should probably change the phrase, cat got your tongue, to isopods got your tongue. You probably don't find this joke funny, but you might understand what we're talking about when this guy takes out a whole isopod from a dead fish. This yellow critter is actually called Cymotha exiguaya, and it takes to feast on the weirdest organ, the tongue. First it latches onto a fish by entering its gills, then it proceeds to eat off its tongue and then it feels bad and decides to replace the missing with itself. Yes, the isopod then becomes the tongue and, and helps the fish grind food against its tiny little teeth on the roof of its mouth. This is literally the only instance where a parasite is known to functionally replace an organ of its host. Of course, the isopod gets locomotion and shelter for free, so it doesn't mind much. But one thing it truly understands is the saying, a friend in need is a friend indeed. Cows moving at night. Cows aren't the most complex creatures on the planet. They eat, they swallow, they regurgitate, and then swallow. Simple. But what's up with all the mooing at night? Isn't the daytime enough for their awful singing? Well, their night moves are different and have another purpose too. Usually they moo because they're scared and they don't feel safe. Many predators lurk around in the dark wilderness, such as coyotes, mountain lions, and even wild dogs. So they are usually loud enough to alert others. Another sadder reason is that many calves moo generally to try and find their mother. Farms typically separate the two to monitor both of the animals properly and give them extra care. But the mother cows don't understand that and will moo as well to find their children. Ouch, someone made a Pixar movie about that. So if you ever find your cows mooing way too much, you might want to go check up on them. Birds throwing up. Usually when animals have to defend themselves, they use their super strength or speed. But what about baby birds? The best they can do is barf, and that's what the Eurasian roller babies do best. These birds vomit up a very foul-smelling orange liquid every time they have to face a predator. The smell is so bad that predators just don't want to eat them anymore and go away. The smell also alerts the parents who come running to them to protect them. These birds are really onto something because they work smarter and not harder. Their vomit can clog their wings and take away their buoyancy quality, resulting in the predators drowning at times. These are some hardcore babies, so watch out. Cuckoo birds drop eggs into other birds' nest. Giving your kid an iPad or making them sit in front of the TV for hours is clearly lazy parenting. Still, come on, cuckoos take it a step further and give their babies away to ransom birds. It's not just a few species that do this. Almost 100 species of cuckoos soap this method of brooding parasites. The worst part is that these babies are super demanding too. Look at this one, pecking away its foster mother's foot not feeding it. Yikes, ungrateful much? The cuckoos aren't completely crazy. They choose birds with smaller eye sizes, which means they target birds who probably need glasses. And because it's the animal world, no one makes glasses for them, and they end up living life as blind as mice. How smart is this trick, though? Some parasitic chicks hatch first and push the hot bird egg out of the nest or simply try to kill their foster siblings. Imagine being born and fighting with your foster siblings from the first second. Now that's bad parenting. Mole Rat Queen 
it would never be the naked mole rat out of all the mammals you would expect to be immortal. Instead, these ugly beasts have the single weirdest biology. They aren't exactly immortal, but how they age is more like radioactive materials decay over time as their half-life decreases. After researching about 300 rats, scientists found out the chances of a rat dying at the age of 1 or 25 are completely the same. It's as if a 30-year-old human and a 90-year-old human had the same chances of dying. Weird, right? Moreover, they never get cancer, diabetes, or even Alzheimer's. They might die of starvation and infection, but their death is almost always caused by external factors, which is very weird. Their bodies can protect their genomes from damage, and anytime they have a cellular mutation, it gets cleared away rapidly. Could it be the fact that they live underground? Should we start living underground? Male giraffes drink pee to figure out if the female is ready to mate. Think of the most unromantic and unattractive thing a guy can do. Now, forget that because we're about to tell you something worse. The reason why this giraffe is bending down is going to be very disgusting, so beware. Before mating, giraffes like to drink the female's urine. In fact, they will go over to her and rub against her backside till she pees. They do this because the taste apparently tells them if the female is in heat or not. Either way, the males are going to stalk the female. If she's in heat, he'll walk behind her in an attempt to keep the other males away. And if the female sees a more handsome, tall drink of probably urine, she'll go over to him. Lemur Cologne Lemurs are one of the few animals that like to get intoxicated. That's why they bite on millipedes. Bet you didn't know that. However, that's not what we're focusing on right now. These insane creatures have a weirder way of finding a partner just like them. Males usually produce a super smelly secret ingredient in their wrist glands. Don't try to shake their little hands if you ever see one. Instead, they rub this smelly ingredient on their tails and wave it around near a mate. These sort of secretions are quite common among lemurs as they use them to communicate with each other. In fact, they use this smell to mark territory, determine social rank, and even declare their readiness for mating. When scientists collected samples of these handmade perfumes, pun intended, they found out that they smelled bitter, leathery, and green to the human nose. But when they collected samples of their secretions during the breeding season, they realized it smelled fruitier and sweeter. A good cologne can attract anyone, and lemurs put that to the test. When cotton pads dipped in these secretions were presented to the female lemurs, they would avidly sniff it. Strangely enough, the female's curiosity with the floral-scented cotton pads doesn't mean that they were more attracted to lemurs when they do the same. Of course, it could just be curiosity, but all signs lead to that conclusion. Why Buffaloes Jump Off Cliffs Before we were farmers, we were hunters and gatherers, and for that, we needed very smart ways of outdoing the strength and speed of animals. The Blackfoot people came up with a very sadistic method of killing their prey, but it was about 12,000 years ago, so things were a lot different back then. They would make buffaloes sort of walk the blank, in this case a cliff, and make them jump off it. But first, they would horn and fur themselves so that the whole herd would follow them right till the end moment, which would be their death. This meant more food for less work. Humans have always been innovative. They had to get this right or the buffaloes would learn to avoid humans and hunting would get even harder. These sites are still present today. In fact, Um Pushkin Buffalo Jump is probably the largest buffalo jump in the world. The Immortal Jellyfish Naturally, mortality in living things is inevitable for at one point or another, the living matter will eventually lose life and will be subject to death. But what if we could live forever? What if we could live to infinity? Well, there is only one creature believed to be immortal in the planet, Turritopsis dorini, also known as the immortal jellyfish. This small jellyfish is found in temperate waters worldwide and can hit the reset button when in crisis and then revert its cells to their earlier form before the crisis. Then they grow a new cell which is free from the threat. If, for example, a Turritopsis dorini survives and gets injured, it can transform to a colony of polyps at will. Then the colony will reproduce a new, identical jellyfish far from the threat. For decades, it has been a belief that it's impossible to evade death, but the Turritopsis dornai has mastered the art of outwitting death. Scientists are now working on a way the same mechanism can be used by humans to become immortal. 4,000 teeth only to eat veggies. Capable of growing up to sizes as large as 20 meters, whale sharks are the largest species of fish in the world. With their size, one would expect that they feed on huge animals to fuel their energy requirements. However, it's quite the opposite. Whale sharks depend solely on algae, plants, and plankton for food despite having over 4,000 teeth. 
What a waste. They are filter feeders and travel some long distances to collect enough food that can sustain their sizes. They have a distinguished white spotted coloration and are popular with divers and snorkelers who describe them as gentle giants. Beavers have metallic teeth. Beavers are the second largest living rodent on the planet. They are extremely aggressive and attack using their claws and teeth. Their teeth are tough as iron, literally. The teeth have thick enamel which is rich in iron. This explains why their teeth are dark orange in color. The iron keeps them strong and resistant to acid. How crows prevent deafness from their own crowing. Did you know that a rooster's crow can deafen a human standing very close to it? On average, the crow of a rooster produces volumes capable of reaching 140 decibels. This volume is equivalent to that produced by a jet taking off if one is standing 15 meters from it. This is enough to turn one deaf by rupturing the eardrums. Fortunately, crows are never victims of their own yelling. So how did they do it? Using a computerized scan, researchers found that as the rooster breaks open its beak for crowing, its ear canal is completely closed. Additionally, half of its eardrum is covered with soft tissues, and even if damaged, they have the capability of regenerating new hair cells in their inner ear. This provided that roosters are incapable of hearing their own crow at maximum volume. All right, comment below if you've witnessed any strange animal behavior. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to Forever Green, and we'll see you in the next one.